Guys, listen, it's been literally five days since the release of Master Duel. I've been playing this game every single day, and I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are addicted to Master Duel as well. Uh, you know, one of the most asked questions is, Sam, how much you spent on Master Duel so far? I spent a good, <laughs> hey, yo, two racks. But listen, you guys don't have to be like me and spend money. You can get a lot of stuff for free. Currently, right now, I grinded all the way from bronze to platinum two with my blue eyes strategy, and I came across a lot of cool different decks in the top meta. And in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the top decks in Master Duel. What is the meta like, and what to look out for when you're in the platinum range of master duel so let's begin the first deck i want to talk to you guys about is sky strikers once you start hitting platinum tier you're going to see a lot of sky striker players this deck is relatively budget to play it doesn't require you to have a lot of urs in the main deck engine as you guys see right now ray is a rare and so is rose so these cards right here are super easy to craft and super easy to obtain sky striker is very powerful although the Kagari is only at one you still have access to engage which is the only ultra rare that you need for the main deck aside from Kagari in the extra deck. That's part of your main core. You got three multi row in the deck as well. So the deck is very, very powerful and it's also super consistent. And not only that, this is one of the decks that doesn't hard lose to Max C. As you guys already know, once you hit the platinum range, Max C, Max C, Max C is literally everywhere so guys sky striker is one of those decks in the platinum range that's super duper resilient to maxi and it doesn't lose to a lot of hand traps and it's one of those decks that can main deck a bunch of hand traps like nibiru like effect dealer like maxi ash blossom ghost ogre literally this deck can play any hand trap that it wants also at the same time for those of you who are coming in from dual links and for those of you who want to learn the link mechanic strategy this is the best link deck to play because it's super duper simple Summon one monster, send it to the graveyard to summon a link monster. It's super duper easy to understand, and it's really easy to pick up, and it's relatively really cheap as well. Before we get started with the next deck, pro tip number one. I just want to let you guys know that it's really important to farm staples, to craft staples as often as you possibly can, keeping cards like Maxi, Effect Veiler, Ash Blossom. These are all cards that you are. They are all ultra cards, which you're going to use to rotate in between decks. So that way that it's easier for you to build decks down the road. As you guys can see, the whole main Sky Striker engine is literally all rares and super rares, right? So they're much more easier to obtain than the URs. So I highly recommend you guys craft staples first, prioritize staples, and the rest will come. Also staples like Hockey Fibrac, Link Monsters like Axis Code Talker, Bunch of Hand Traps. Those are the cards that you must be prioritizing when it comes to building any Yu-Gi-Oh deck. The next deck that I've been seeing a lot in the Platinum tier is Tri Brigade. This can be pure Tri Brigades, Tri Brigade Lyrilus, Zodiac Tri Brigades, literally the Platinum tier will have a bunch of Tri Brigade based decks. Tri Brigade is one of those easy decks to play. And not only is it super duper easy to understand and super easy to play, but it's also really, really budget. Most of these decks right here, as you guys can see, all the Ultra Rares are all hand traps, like Maxi, like Ash Blossom. All these URs are staples that you must have in your collection. So it's easier when it comes to building these type of decks, you can just craft the commons or the rares. Then it makes your deck super duper easy to build, right? So like I said, always prioritize staples but tri brigade is one of those decks i can put up in the gates it is a tier one deck at the moment and even in master duel the deck is super duper consistent it can make unbreakable wards with some more avion utopic future ensemble robin there are so many cool lines of plays when it comes to utilizing this deck right here also at the same time this deck is one of those decks that can utilize zeus Zeus is very powerful, especially going second. If you can summon an Xyz monster and attack, get access to Zeus to clear your opponent's entire board. The deck can do it all. It can make a bunch in the gates. It's super consistent. And also at the same time, while going second, gets you access to Zeus. And like I said earlier in the Sky Striker deck, always prioritize staples. Once you have staples, you can literally craft any deck you want, especially the Tri Brigade or Sky Striker deck. They're super duper budget friendly, outside from the staples, of course. The next deck that I've seen a lot in the Platinum tier has to be Eldritch. This deck only has three main deck URs. That's part of the core, which is Eldritch the Golden Lord. That's pretty much it. All right, guys, all the other draw cards like Pot of Extravagance, Pot of Prosperity, Curse Eldlin, Sanguine is a super rare. Conquistador is a rare. All the floodgates are super rares. Literally, the deck is super budget to play alongside hand traps like Maxi if you're main decking, of course. Eldritch is a trap deck which focuses on control and also flooding out your opponent. What does flooding out mean? Flooding out means to floodgate out your opponent. And if you guys are new to Master Duel, floodgates are cards like goes in match, Vandy's Emptiness, which is legal, by the way, in Master Duel, a card that doesn't allow special summoning at all. 
and utilizing cards like Skill Drain, which is a super rare in Master Duel to negate all effects of monsters on the field. This is the second deck I've seen the most, and I believe it's dominating over the meta right now when it comes to Master Duel in Platinum, especially Platinum 2 right now. I've been facing a lot of Drytrons. Drytrons is one of the nastiest decks ever. Has you guys seen what happened in the TCG before the, you know, limitation of Ben 10, Drytrons is literally taking over Master Duel right now. This deck is a really powerful combo deck, which has access to three Cyber Angel Ben 10. Not only that, they can also deal with Maxi super duper easily. They have cards like Call by the Grave, and the fact that they have a main deck, Herald of Orange Light, to mitigate that makes this deck super duper scary. And once the deck combos off, you're going to have a really hard time on actually breaking through their boards. And if you actually break their boards and not OTK them, their graveyard is probably already filled with all the resources they need to actually make the exact same board again on the following turn. So one of the best ways to actually counter this deck is, like I said earlier, for all my other decks is to craft maxis and craft hand traps, right? Maxi really hurts this deck. If you maxi them, they're more likely going to stop unless they have the Herald to mitigate your maxi. So guys, if you plan on climbing up the platinum ranks, you need maxi in your deck. Also, Drytrons is really budget as well. The only UR that you have as part of the main core of the deck is probably just Divine of the Herald and Mubeta Fafnir. That's pretty much it for like the main ultras that you want to try to focus on when it comes to the main core of the deck right here. Obviously, there's other URs that you want to try to get, but the other URs are part of the staple pool, which you should already be initially trying to chase as the number one priority when it comes to actually playing decks competitively. Honestly, this deck is very strong, especially with three Ben 10 being in the main deck. So expect to see a lot of this deck right here in the Platinum tiers of Master Duel. And last but not least, the deck that I have right here for this tier list currently for the number one spot definitely has to be Zodiac. Here, Zodiac is insane. Honestly, guys, whenever I'm in Platinum 2, there are two decks that I would expect. I would expect Drytron and I would expect Zodiac. But out of 10 matches, I probably face like five Zodiacs, like three Drytrons, one Sky Striker, one Tri Brigade. That's all that you're going to be basically seeing most of the time in the Platinum 2 to 1 ranks. The reason why Zodiacs are so powerful is the fact that they can play a bunch of hand traps. Like I said, make sure you craft your UR hand traps first. Their entire deck core is super duper budget, and it's one of those decks that you don't really have to think whether or not you're going first or second. The deck can do both. It can go first, or I can go second. Going first, it sets up a Dryden, four hand traps in hand. Going second, it makes Zeus, clears your opponent's entire board, and also sets up a Dryden with a bunch of hand traps. And it's also one of those decks that plays key staples like Monster Reborn, Regeki, and Lightning Storm, which you can easily get at the beginning of the game. If you finish the solo mode duo strategy, Konami already gives you Monster Reborn Regeki. Zodiac players main deck those cards. Also, at the same time, you guys buy the special pass bundle where you get 10 packs of mega packs and the one lightning storm. They also play lightning storm in their main deck because it doesn't matter, right? Their deck just relies on one card combos. One Zodiac monster gets you access to Dryden. One Zodiac monster gets you access to Zeus. And if they maxi you on normal summon, you just make Dryden pass, right? So maxi doesn't really gain a lot of value. Similar ideas to Sky Strikers, where it's super duper easy to play because this deck just requires one monster to exceed summon. And if you're starting back into the game and want to play a deck and want to learn how to exceed summon more efficiently, Zodiacs and Sky Strikers are the two decks that I would highly recommend when it comes to learning how to play the XCs mechanic and also the link mechanic right here. But overall, expect these decks that I listed right here to be the meta decks of Master Duel. Obviously, right now, we don't have a current balance for Master Duel as of yet. But obviously, as time goes by, the decks will change. Decks will flow out. The new balance is going to take into effect and fix any problems that Master Duel has right now. But if you guys are climbing up the ranks and trying to actually reach that Platinum 1 status, these are the decks you guys got to definitely watch out for. There are a bunch of honorable mentions I want to make in today's video. There are a bunch of decks that float around gold and platinum. Once you hit gold, you're going to be seeing a lot of cool meta decks that are also very, very powerful. Decks like Phantom Knights are also very powerful and relatively budget to build outside from obtaining the staples. Oh my god, and I also cannot forget one of my favorite decks of all time in Master Duel, which I've seen once, not a lot in ranked, and I feel like this deck is super underrated. 100,000% heroes. Heroes are so strong, especially with Dark Law. Dark Law going first against, you know what I'm saying? Drytrons, pretty much over. So, 
gonna put heroes on this list 100,000%. Pendulum Magicians, you can also play Pendulum and Demion. You can tackle Salomon Greats. Other meta decks you're gonna see in Gold and Platinum is also Virtual World. Very strong deck to get you access to Shen Shen, which is a Macro Cosmos, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, which is a Monster Negate, and most importantly, Chuche, the trap card, which allows you to pop cards on your opponent's side of the field, which is actually very powerful. And Emancipators as well. I've seen this deck once or twice. I haven't seen it too much, but the deck is actually very, very powerful. Do you guys know what's crazy about An Emancipators in Master Duel? Block Dragon is not banned. So guys, use this time wisely right now and play some An Emancipators. The deck is so strong. It's a synchro based deck, which has a bunch of linked plays, can make a bunch of negates. And with Block Dragon, Oh my god. These are the decks that you guys definitely gotta expect and look out for. And one thing that I want you guys to take out of this is you need to prioritize staples. Get as many staples as you can and building decks should be easier every single time once you have the staples already in your card pool. Staples like Maxi, Ash Blossom, Lightning Storms, all these hand traps and counteractive cards are the main key for winning Master Duel. If you guys haven't gotten your Lunar, New Year playmat. Make sure you guys get it today in the link down below. I'm not sure if it's sold out yet or not, but if it isn't, you guys can get it in the link down below at TX1.com. Hopefully, you guys learned something from today's video. If you guys enjoy, smash the thumbs up button. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is your boy Sam from Team Sam signing out. All right, guys. Peace. Fuck you, beat.